We are back, and this is our last show of the year. I know many of you guys are going, thank God. Last show of the Gregorian year. Yeah, the Gregorian <laughs> year of 2019. <laughs> and what better way to do a show uh, than to drink some whiskey and talk about gear of the year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, gear of the year. Second show today. took your trailer away before you could even use it the second time. Anyway, in all seriousness, um, we're here today to talk about uh, gear of the year, and it's been quite a year for gear. Let's see how many times we can make all this gear, <laughs> year, gear. rhyme Whoa. together. If you think about it, uh, this has been a year where just about every camera company has come out with camera after camera after camera after camera. And it's really kind of hard to pick a, a real outstanding product this year because in essence, I think most of the products that are there are really outstanding. You know, Canon has released their mirrorless, Nikon has released their mirrorless, Panasonic's come out with a new system. Uh, everybody's got something new and they all perform and they all do a pretty darn good job. So, you know, part of the whole thing at this point is not to find something so outstanding, but talk about a number of the outstanding products that uh, we saw out there. And so what I'm going to do is kind of go through a list I've prepared here earlier today. And uh, as I go through it, uh, uh, Jody and Phil will kind of chime Jody. in on what they feel. Phil. Phil. Jody. And uh, let's see where we end up. Now, of course, you may not agree and you might be brand agnostic to uh, a brand that we don't have on our list. Like if you're a Leica guy, um, you might want to just tune, tune out now because it's, it's not showing Cam up anywhere on the list. I find the camera industry is very much like the computer industry. Yeah. There are people that will hate a manufacturer because oh, yeah, they love sure. another one. Yeah. It's really a phenomenal it no sense. It's amazing. Actually, a funny thing at Thanksgiving, we decided we weren't going to talk politics at Thanksgiving at all uh, because, you know, just... Uh, Gosh, I don't understand why. There are some Trumpers <laughs> in my family. <laughs> So we decided, you know, we went talking. We had a great Thanksgiving all the way up to the time <laughs> where I said, hey, I want to, this is my new iPhone 11 Pro Max, and it's really good. And my brother-in-law goes, wow, this is my Android. And well, that was it. I'll never have an Apple. Yes, yeah, never. Well, never. I'll never have an Android. Never. <laughs> and it was just like, you could almost go through party <laughs> lines. You should have just right gone with there. politics, right? It was like, oh It's boy. amazing. So now, next time Christmas comes around, no talking phones and no talking politics. Uh, I wonder if we have anything to talk about. So let's get this thing started off. First camera that makes the top of my list is the Sony a7R IV. Um, and no particular reason of the order, it just happens to be at the top of my list. Could be anywhere if we were doing an alphabet. I wish it was on the end of your list. Okay, well. Because I think it's the winner. If we had to pick, if I had to pick had one to pick of, a camera. of all of yeah. these cameras that came yeah. out, I would, yeah. I would have to say. For sure. I would have to say that. So well, I would have to say so too. I, I have the a 7 Oh, so we're gonna put it, wait for the last? No, we're, we're talking about uh, it now because these people that don't want to watch us for the full 20 minutes or whatever oh, it turns gosh. out to be. Can, that's, they, they, that's a lot of we people. We now know are. what the best camera is. We can tune out <laughs> anytime. Um, everybody but, just so, shut we, off. We do have some nine surprises. people watching, <laughs> eight of them might turn it off. <laughs> so you might want to stick, <laughs> you might want to stick around and actually find out some of the surprises because I think we have a few. So anyway, there's no question the A7R4. Sony just keeps knocking it out of the park. Uh, they've made some brilliant cameras along the way. Uh, they've also made some... Yeah, they've learned it and they yeah. stumbled. They still have a lot to learn about uh, designing good menu systems. Uh, but um, and weather sealing. And weather sealing, but the, 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 I don't know. It's <laughs> like it's just sticking on a bag around it. It would be fine. This, th this is more weather sealed than before. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the other camera, which I, I really love this year, and of course Sony came out with an A A9 R2, um, very spectacular uh, specs to it. I have the A9, the original A9 A9. II. The A9 II. Right. Yeah, it's not an R. Excuse me. Yeah. A9 II. And I have the original A9, and of course, after looking at everything, I decided not to switch. Thank God. You know, I used to be an upgrader. 
Well, I tell you, it used to be. <laughs> Come on. That's that's one of the things I was talking about when you said a lot of great cameras. I had a, a lot of pros that said a thousand dollars for what they did. Eh, I think it helps sell the other one. I'm going to hang. Yeah. I'll get a nine right now. And right. I had quite a number of people that yeah. did that. Yeah. yeah. That helped. A nine though, so fast, so quick. After they've done the updates that they've you know, that they've introduced to that camera, it just woke it up again. And as soon as yeah. they came out with the price point of this new one, we just sold the old A9 like it was. Yeah, I think no, that's, so, yeah. You know, and it's kind of funny. I wonder why Sony doesn't adopt a lot of the things that it put on the A9R, like the dials and, you know, ability to set things from on top of the camera and so forth versus. There's no you know, A9R. You mean the A7R. A7R. A7. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to drink. You anymore. can't <laughs> click glass and not drink. Oh okay, my no, God. no, oh God, okay. <laughs> How many more times am I going to have to say A7R 100 RS? I don't know. <laughs> it's going to cost you. <laughs> I better call Deborah to see if she can come get you. <laughs> <laughs> the other camera, which I think Sony did an outstanding job of this year, is the Sony RX 107. When you consider that's A9 specs pretty much inside a camera that you can put in your pocket, pop up yeah. viewfinder. Uh, 24 to 200 millimeter equivalent uh, lens, 20 plus frames per second, super um, you know, slow motion. Was that similar to the camera you had at uh, Neil Young? That's the one I took to, to Neil, Neil Young. Young. Yeah, oh, I'm telling you, he it. kicked my ass. We were front oh. row balcony together, and I'm shooting, he's shooting, he just kicked my ass. That camera was awesome at that show. Yeah, I think nice. it was the camera, yeah, too. it's one of those yeah. cameras you can sneak into. <laughs> Trust it. me, it was the camera. <laughs> it is one of those <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to bullshit you. It was the camera. Yeah. It was incredible. <laughs> and and, and, Phil's and so was Neil Young. Yeah, and, and, and you're a good concert photographer. Yes. So yeah. going back Thank down you. through my list, the other camera came out earlier this year, and we did videos on it, was the uh, Olympus EM-1X. And um, what a spectacular camera that is. We have that right here. Um, this camera is built uh, incredibly well. It's built like a tank. Yeah, it really is. No it's, it's one of the finest built cameras. Actually, if we were giving an award for the finest built camera, sturdiest and well, waterproof and all the things that go along with it, uh, this camera would win hands down. It's and I've true. shot with it in pouring rain with mine on many occasions. And no, I mean, it's, it's Yeah, you don't amazing. have to worry about it. Well, it's great to have people run up to you. Hey, hey, can I help you with a... No, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Well, maybe they're running up to you because they just see you. <laughs> can I run up to you? Can yeah, I you help look, you before you, you fall? Like you need help. Where, can I are you on, on the rocks? <laughs> are you a star? I know I've seen you somewhere before. Uh, followed by uh, the new Fuji X-Pro3. This is the X-Pro3 by Fuji. A um, little oddball about a rangefinder camera, but uh, heavily anticipated, and a number of people have waited a long time for it. Obviously, the differences are... Uh, there's no rear screen to actually see the rear screen. You got to pull it down to see. Uh, is the EVF a little flat? You know, well, my EVF <laughs> is not performing as well as I would like to see it, and we'll have to take that back up with uh, the Fuji folks. Uh, moving right along, the other camera got a lot of attention, and um, it's a big brick and it's really heavy, but it apparently has an amazing uh, viewfinder, and it's a Leica SL2. They've uh, finally. I'll tell you, I was impressed with it. Yeah. I got to play with it at the expo and. It, it's nice, and I'm not a big Leica guy, I don't, but it's a nice camera. They, they did a lot of neat things, little slight upgrades from the original, and you can tell. It's, it's cool. It's you know, cool between, camera. Yeah. Be, they've also come out with a good uh, lens range, plus you can get adapters and yeah. put M lenses on it. So, you know, my hat's off to Leica. If you're a Leica fan or you want some uh, quality camera there, that'd be great. It is, it's part of the new mount. Yeah. 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 But we don't have a Leica camera here because they, they've probably sold it. Yeah. We, no, we don't. They're, we, they're, they're we're not going to take a camera for us when we have customers right. who want we got people yeah. waiting on them. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, and that's it, kind of seemed to be the, the, the trend of the year. If you had bought one, we would have yours here. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't buy one. Just I'm saying. Not, I'm, not, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Not a, I'm not an upgrader this year. I'm on a kind of restrained budget. Do you know why you're on a restrained budget? Why? Because of my favorite best product of 2019. What is that? PhotoPXL.com. Dot com. <laughs> hey, if you haven't tuned That's in and subscribed. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> Please. That Just, was a surprise. He didn't know that was coming. And we worked hard. I wonder where you were going there. Yeah, it's been, actually, we, we did launch uh, PhotoPXL 
uh, in July of this year. It's only been four and a half months, and we have an extreme uh, large amount of uh, readers and followers and growing every day and uh, trying to put a bunch of various type of articles up, you know, one or one every other day to, you know, hopefully fill a broad range. We have. Yeah, I know I owe you an article. I know. God. Well, I would appreciate that. <laughs> I have a spot for you, ready to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <I> bet. <laughs> anyway, uh, please, if you, if you get a chance, uh, visit the photopxl.com website, and uh, hopefully you'll like it. We have a forum in the user community and all sorts of cool stuff there. Uh, being right back on, though, I was talking about the Fuji GFX100, and uh, Fuji knocked it out of the park. Uh, they previously had uh, 250 megapixel uh, versions of uh, I... a camera system, and now they've got the 100, and it's... It's quite exceptional what they've done with this camera. But why did they rest restrict themselves, bind themselves so much on production? Well, they are not going to make enough for demand. It is weird. Intentionally. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let, me, let me go back and, to or, history. Or they didn't really understand what the demand might be. I think the demand has nothing to do with what they don't understand as much as it is to get good quality sensors. The yield oh, rate, that's the, an the yield rate of sensors, the larger they get, and this is based upon my days being at uh, phase one, are very difficult. I mean, we would launch phase one products and uh, we couldn't deliver them just because we couldn't get enough sensors yeah. to put in them. And if you remember when the Hasselblad came out with the X1D, uh, you know, that thing just waited and waited and waited because, you know, trying to get a good yield on sensors was a real hard And part. they have a bigger problem now because if they use them now, the oh, Chinese man. government will get our information from the sensors. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Do you need a tinfoil hat? <laughs> We can make one for you for the next for the next episode. We will have a tinfoil hat. Are we starting our own bullshit thing here on this <laughs> this video? Well, a conspiracy, uh, you know. So every time you shoot with uh, the GFX, it's, it 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 sends your information to China. No, GFX is made in Japan. You know, so how is it? it Hasselblad is owned by Chinese. Oh, but you're talking about Hasselblad. Yeah, I said had You said Hasselblad. I yeah, said Hasselblad. but okay, but. All right, so we, we want to... Japan's our friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for the geography oh, and God. lesson in the current, current <laughs> history of the world. Okay. Um, <laughs> Panasonic also made a very good camera this year. That's the Panasonic S1R and the S1. Um, they've done quite a nice job there. Plus, they've upgraded their firmware, if I'm not mistaken, on their GH series, correct? They have. And yeah. uh, that's almost really taken that camera they've to another level. They've done a couple things to it, yeah. And then they've also upgraded the G9 and turned it into like a GH, GH5. So they've really done a lot of updates lately to their Micro Four Thirds lineup. And on the S1R again, is you also have the SL2 and the Sony lens and the Sigma lenses. Right. So that's a whole marriage. Yeah. That's kind of cool to have a lot of new glass. 2019. So you're seeing quite literally how hard this is because now we're going to talk about the big two. The Canon came out with their first mirrorless camera, which you became a fan of. Well, can't, they came out last year with the camera. Yeah, but, it's true. But, yeah, but you know, and I'll be honest. I mean, when it came out, I dogged it like everybody else did because I read the specs, and the specs didn't stack up to what Sony had. So, you know, it just looked lackluster. But then I started shooting with it, and then they started rolling out updates like Fuji did. You know, that they, they, these companies have gotten smart. Nikon's doing the same thing. They're updating the cameras. They're not coming out with a camera and then their answer is a new camera. They're updating them, they're making them better and better. And the Canon R now has a lot of updates to it. The autofocus tracking system is nothing like what it was when it was launched. The eye focus tracking on it is awesome. And then they came out with lenses that are just incredible. Uh, the new 70 to 200 28 RF came out uh, just a few weeks ago. This thing is crazy. Uh, not only is it super compact, I mean, no one has a 7200 this small. No, no one does. Um, it's really light. It's almost like it's got helium in it. The thing is so lightweight. Minimum focus distance is the other killer. You put it on a camera, hand it to somebody, and say, point it at me. And, and you know, you're within two feet, and it's, it's lock and focus. It's just crazy. Uh, so now they have three serious lenses. They have the 24 to 70 RF. They have the 7200 RF and they have the 15 to 35. So they've got their Trinity out there now and they're all just and sharp as attack. And I'm confident, I've been told confident, confidently from people that would know 
took that, a little to get that out. That didn't there's it? body. There's a body. Yeah, I mean or that's the only common. thing. This is not a sports body. Right. We're not kidding anybody no, here. It's not, it's not, not a sports for sports or it's a pro great, shooter. It's, it's a, a great a, portrait camera. It's great landscape, yeah. nature stuff. But yeah, it's not. But fast when you put enough these lenses on what's coming, yeah, I mean it's going to be. And that, and to me, that's what it is. I mean, is the new Sony crazy awesome? Yeah, it's an awesome camera. But the lenses are where it's going. It's what's making this camera system complete. Same thing with the Nikon. I mean, you've got the new 24 to 72 8S. This thing is incredibly sharp. And again, it's because of the mount. The, this this lens is so close to the sensor. Yeah, show the size of that. that. Yeah, it's a huge mount, but it's smart. They, they, and, and we've talked about this in previous episodes, but this is what's gonna really differentiate Canon and Nikon from Sony. And I think it's gonna happen quickly. I, I think I've, we're gonna see stuff that Sony just can't do. I've made a, a change in your 2019 uh, nomenclature, so to speak, in that a lot of the cameras came out late 2018. So they're 2019 events, because yeah. that's when they right. started flying. Yep. And that's not just that lens, that's both Z cameras. Yeah. Yeah. Came out late, late, November. Right. And they have been, they're, they're great. Yeah. And again, they've done firmware updates to that camera. Yeah. Not that it was a horrible camera, but they've done great updates to it. And that's what these camera, these companies are really starting to realize. They've got to firmware update these things. They've put IAF in the Nikon, yeah. for example, yeah. and a few things like yeah. that. So uh, it's, it's really we coming along. We can thank along. Fuji for that, because they were the camera company that did that before anybody else did. They, when the Pro 1 came out, it was a dog of a camera. And by the time it was done, it was a completely different animal. And these guys are starting to realize they've got to do that. They can't just come out with a camera and then their answer is, if it's shitty, that, well, here's the new one. You know, they, they can't do that. You've got to update these cameras. I think the camera company's got to realize something and that you just can't keep coming out with new cameras and expect people to right. fork over another two to three, what? four thousand dollars anymore because we're not doing that. Tell us what happened with the Z50. What do you mean? Like when it came out, it what's happened yeah. to it? It's not uh, my, so well, We honestly. don't deal with it much yeah. at all. I mean, it's okay. It, it's, it's, I understand why they came out with it. I mean, it's smart to have an APS-C camera out there. But, I mean, really only your Nikon loyalists have jumped on it at this point. It's mm -hmm. just not been a big seller. But I think it will. I think it'll eventually take a But I also think <laughs> APS-C is kind of a weird spot now. I mean, you, like I was explaining to someone earlier who's already in Micro Four Thirds, <clears throat> and someone told them they should look at APS-C, and I'm like, no, I don't think you should. I think you should look at full frame. If you're gonna do another camera, if you're gonna have two systems, there's absolutely no reason to have an APS-C. Well, I was about no to say that's exactly what I did. Well, guess what? It's exactly what you did. Right, exactly what I, I did. did. I, did. Yeah. It makes we, a lot of sense to have a full frame we camera. We both got an R. And a Micro yeah. Four Thirds camera. And they both serve oh. completely different purposes. Somebody came in and bought a Nikon R lens, or a Nikon Z lens, rather, and was buying a Sony lens. And it's like, wow, well, it's because they have both systems, because both systems do something different. Yep, I know. And it's an investment, and it's not, not for everybody, but if you can afford to do it, there are reasons to have When I was in a systems. commercial studio, we had all sorts of different yeah. brands of cameras. There are reasons to do for it. For different purposes. For sure. You know? it's, I think that, you know, this is where maybe we're, we're finding that it's gonna be a kind of a, a professional and serious uh, enthusiast are gonna be, you know, basically a two format uh, camera system. I think so too. Uh, you know, I had uh, Micro Four Thirds, APS-C, and full frame, and now I'm just keeping the APS-C and full frame, uh, and, and moving away from Micro Four Thirds. But uh, it's, I think we will find those reasons. You don't want something small to take out for right. a, an evening, like this X Pro Three. You know, this is great for going out to dinner, going to a party, shooting things. You know, they're going on. But you know, if I really want to put the big lenses on and do the things I do on my wildlife and landscape work. I'm going to want the A7R4 with you know the best optics I can get and, and shoot yeah. with that. Sure. So I think we're going to see a lot of that along the way. One of the next cameras that I think you'll be surprised that I'm actually including it as a camera, but um, I've got an article coming out, uh, if it's not out by the time you see this video, called My Phone is a Camera, or My, my Camera is a Phone, I should say. And uh, that's I, the, the... I often ask people when I want to ask my wife, <clears throat> would you grab your camera and take a picture. And what is it? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's remarkable. And I think Apple has done it. Um, of course, I think the other competitor brands have done it. But I, I looked at them all and ended up buying the uh, iPhone 11 Pro Max. And uh, what, that, all done it, though, what, what that camera has done as far as uh, photography, 
First off, I'm a proponent of always having a camera with you. Right. It's something, since I was 13 years old, I've always carried a camera geek. with me if I could. Geek. geek. Yeah, call me a geek if you want, but I got a lot of dates out of it. <laughs> I uh, agree with this geek. <laughs> yeah, you're a geek too. Yeah, we're <laughs> it's a lot of geeks. But the point being is that, you know, this camera now has three lenses. You can do wide, ultra wide, and, you know, kind of a telephoto. It's uh, got portrait uh, lighting and all this different things. It's computational photography, and there's a ton of apps. I mean, I use it as a Polaroid a lot of times. When I'm set up, like a few weeks ago in Yosemite, I was doing a lot of landscape, and I would just get my iPhone out and shoot the same picture, and it would give me the ability to almost do a quick Polaroid to see, yep, I think I got it, and there's nothing that I'm not seeing. But can't you use your phone to take a picture with your camera and actually see what the camera? I thinking? can do that too as a remote control oh, okay. and so forth. And, uh, I also can, can you know, get back in the car and very quickly, even though it's not from you know, my uh, 61 megapixel camera, you know, send something out on social media and share oh, about what that is. Put Narbox down there. We have oh, Narbox, I, I forgot believe. you have it. Oh, good, yeah, good. Right you just here. reminded me. How did I forget that? It's okay. Right in front of you. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come to the Narbox in a second. Don't skip ahead. <laughs> So this kind of wraps up our, our, our cameras White. of the year. Any of the additional cameras? Oh, this. Do you have ADD? I'm, I'm all out. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you can join us at any time you want, okay? But Phil and I are going to continue and talk about lenses. So there's an awful lot of cool lenses that have come out, and we can kind of zoom through right these. Just about every lens coming out these days are pretty exceptional lenses. Uh, you know, it used to be you'd look at a Tamron or a Sigma and kind of think of them as third-party low-priced lenses. And uh, man, every one of these camera lenses are are, are yeah. knocking it out of the park as far as specs go and yeah, so forth. That's incredible. Um, we talk. Uh, we have the Sony 200 to 600 in front of us. Sony also put out a 400 this year and a 600. And they needed prime, to. and they had to because they had a problem. Uh, they needed the lenses and. Uh, 400, 600, 2 to 6, 24 1 4, 35 1 8, all 2019. We talked about the lenses from the, the Canon mirrorless side of things and what they're doing, and they're, they've got quite a roadmap planned there. You know, Nikon's doing the same thing with theirs. Plus, uh, we were hoping we would have their new 58 millimeter 0.9 knocked lens out, which, you know, comes in its own suitcase right yeah it's yeah. cool yeah. it's really cool they they came in <laughs> they i was doing allocations case. on yeah, it they man. come in i see these boxes that look like they're a nikon six lens <laughs> box and i go oh god there's no way we ordered 12 of these it's the 58 and i'm checking they're packing this and something I go, it's one that's one that's one lens the and box man, is it heavy the that box the one lens come beast. in must be Three foot by two foot. But that's almost a nine thousand dollar lens, right? It is. Yeah. It but is. it's an amazing piece of engineering it's and technology. Crazy. It's not even cool autofocus. Yeah. And yeah. because of the mount again, it's true. point nine five. Yeah. So. And again, that's something Sony's not able to do. And this is something the mount. This is something yeah, Nikon used to do years ago when they used to come out with the giant fish eyes and you know some of these really extraordinary type of, of lenses. Yeah. It's kind of cool because to see this coming back yeah. and and doing it. They're not going to sell a ton of them, but what it does is also help separate their product from anybody else and but I, you know, but I can understand people being upset that they come out with that and they don't have this yet I yeah mean, they got to yeah, get it's a crazy. To it. and that's terrible yeah. autofocus on what the knob. it doesn't have any so yeah it's horrible yeah. <laughs> you're just pushing the button well, hey, isn't this Phil, thing focusing? It's, it's not this working it's broken yeah, it's, it's eight thousand bucks and it's broke what? you believe that <laughs> oh and uh thank you Dr. Fisher he got one oh <laughs> he did. Yeah, we're drinking his, his um, whiskey, too. Uh, Fuji's come out with a number of cool lenses. They've got that 16 millimeter 2.8 lens, which is really nice, the uh, 16 to 80. But uh, Sigma has a really beautiful 35 millimeter 1.2 art lens out. Now, why do you need a 1.2 on a, uh, not? You know, a, a 35 millimeter camera? But uh, they've, they've done it, and Boca. it's quite different. Boca, yeah, well, Boca. but it's, you know, how much Boca, Boca at 35 Boca. meters did you get? <laughs> well, how do you say that? Ove. Ove Boca. Ove Boca. <laughs> the Canon also, re didn't Canon release a 12 to, or not Canon, Olympus? Uh, 12 to 200. 12 to 200. Actually, 12 to 200. that's what's on this camera right here. Uh, and that's or, a, no, I'm sorry, it's not. I've got the 14 to 150. But yes, they did come out with the uh, 12 to 200. So when you think about that, that's a 24 to 400 millimeter lens on a small camera like this. And if you're right. a traveler, you know, wanting to keep your 
weight down if you, you do cruises, um, you know, like a, on big ships like the Big Princess or whatever those things yeah. are. Uh, probably be really good. I know my son. Big Princess cruise lines. Yeah, you know, no, Big Princess. <laughs> it's the Big Princess or the Little Princess. Anyway, you get the drift. I'm not trying to sell a cruise over another, but the fact that if you're yeah, if, a I, problem, if, if I was a cruise, if I was a cruiser, this might be the camera I'd, I'd consider. Yeah. And if you fell overboard, small. it would still work. Yeah, it's because it's, right. it's, it's, well, really it's well. very, very waterproof. Yeah, but, I don't you know, know if it's that water resistant. <laughs> <laughs> if you um, held your it's hand It's pretty up. waterproof. Any, yeah. any other lenses that I'm missing that you, you gentlemen would like to add uh, to the, that list? From 2019? Well, the year isn't over yeah. yet. <laughs> Every time we do a Sony training, this asshole has to pull that lens out and come in on it in the middle of a forum with all these people online on Facebook Live. And people are like, what lens is that? <laughs> We do training on this, and I'll, I'll ask all the time. Hey, the other day I couldn't get my 1.4 teleconverter to slap into place on my 150 to 400, and the guy's going, um, "What?" I don't know familiar with that. Lab. And then once they figure it out, they're like, "Oh, it's Jody." Yeah. You know what I almost brought up for best of 2019, but it was a little bit too far back into 2018. What's that? Godox. Oh. Oh. Well, which one? All of them, just all the Godox yeah. event, the which we didn't talk thing. about, but it was really too far back into 2018 to make it this year. We should do an On the Rocks on, on lighting because it's yeah. changing so yeah. radically. It is changing pretty yeah. quick. <clears throat> Something we can think about. Are we back on? All right. Oh. Are we running at all? Well, one more great, since the year isn't over yet, it could be that this will be a great lens of the year. Here we go again. Oh wait, maybe we'll do it this way. It's December 3rd, Jody. Yep. <laughs> you have one minute. Yeah, so I was gonna make it upside down. Uh. <laughs> so what about that? You just wanna get it out of your system? Well, it's not, the year isn't over yet. Okay, so. None of the negativity, man. <laughs> All right. Morality you know, or you know Kelly's Heroes? Yeah, I know none Kelly's of the, Heroes. None, right. of the, none of the negativity. <laughs> Welcome to Jody's world. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to some things that aren't lenses and aren't cameras, but are photographic. And um, we have a few of these listed. First one we'd like to talk about, which I think is a very cool product, especially for anybody doing a mixture of video and still work in the field uh, these days, and that's the Narbox, Narbox. Um, the Narbox 2. Uh, it's really an incredible, uh, product. It's a very versatile product. Jody, do you want to um, highlight anything along that way for us? It uh, plug your car your SD cards in it. Download. You can cable into it. You can wireless into it. You can connect to the World Wide Web with it. World Wide Web. <laughs> <laughs> the big old World Wide Web. <laughs> you can you can upload your images. You can get to social. You can review your images. It is. It has a version of Photo Mechanic on it. I don't know how many of you use. I personally use Photo Mechanic. It actually has a version of Photo Mechanic on it. It's not just. There's like three different apps, uh, right? A yeah. drive that you yeah. can yeah. that you load down. You can actually use it in place of a computer. Completely. Yeah. Completely in place of a computer. Yeah. It comes in. Uh, Five twelve. 256. One gig, is there 256 a, also? Yeah, right. 256, 512, one terabyte, I think. Yep. Financially, the 512 and one gig is worth it because the 256 ends up. Yeah, it's like one card worth, might as well just. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, but uh, it's really it's a smart cool. company yeah. and it's yeah. really, really, really well built. The other uh, product which we don't have here, although I have to say that uh, it did get delivered today, is the uh, new Peak Design uh, Travel Tripod, which uh, I've got a lot of good tripods, and you know, you sold me my Gitzo travel pod or something. Did uh, you hear that, Jan? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's a beautiful tripod, and it's done well, but uh, this new Peak Design, with the, everything that Peak Design does... Uh, you know, it's teeny, of, right? Well, it's not so teeny. It's, uh, it's about the same size height-wise, oh, yeah. but it's rather yeah. than be that wide with the legs sticking out, what Which they've done is kind of... Design the legs angularly, like you know, pieces. Yeah, that's that cuts a, but I pie. thought it made it's the marketing makes it look smaller this way. Very good, very well. It's marked. got a tricky ball head on it, so um, it's kind of weird in a center column, which I'm totally against center columns and uh, to use like and go vertical. You do have to put the center column up a little bit. We'll be doing a review on this, but it's still really light, really cool, and you know, if you're just want to go with the minimal, like uh, this kind of camera and uh, a lightweight tripod. 
uh, then this Peak Design uh, tripod might be one that you want to look at. Um, and can I take a step back for a second? Yes, sir. There is also a similar product to the Narbox I forgot about, which I should have brought up here, which was the, uh, it was very confusing to me, it was the Lacey DGI. Boss. Pilot. Yeah, yeah Boss Pilot. Yeah, DJI Pilot. And I always thought it was just for DGI. In other words, you had to have a drone to be using it. But no, it's a, it's a slightly lesser capable unit than this, does a lot of the same stuff for considerably less money. Right. And it's a pretty neat product. Uh, it is a cool product. I have that product. Um, I will probably do a review on it. And I primarily use it to download uh, images and then be able to uh, put them into my iPad Pro 13 inch. Right, that's great. And, and that's where, you know, now that the iPads are finally getting to the point where they can take external loading files and you can do whatever you want so with forth. it. And uh, it's, it comes with a lot of this accessories. Is it's got a, like a weird it. screen. It looks like a silver screen, but it all lights up. And it's like a little TV. Yeah. So, yes, it's yeah. uh, well worth uh, looking at. But I really believe that, you know, the NAR box is the, you know, supersedes that as far He's as... He's the king. Oh, sure. Yeah. The yeah. DJI Pilot's the jack. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's a good one to look at go. also. Um, the other camera I, I've picked that I'm having a lot of fun with these days is the uh, Osmo, DJI Osmo action camera. It's kind of like uh, a rethought out Hero uh, Pro 6 or 5. Um, it's, it's incredibly small. It's incredibly yeah. small and it has a screen on the front so as bloggers you can push a button plus the operation is a lot easier to use in my opinion than the GoPro. Yeah. So uh, we've been using that one a lot lately. It's got a great microphone and you can do some fun stuff with it. It's not that expensive so uh, that one has been working out really well. The GoPro 8 which I believe we have on the Actually, table. Actually I do not have a GoPro Oh because you yeah. sold it? Yeah we sold it. The pocket's yeah. doing good yeah. too. Yeah, the, the, the little pocket one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have that too. We should have brought that, yeah, but that's a. We have the well we have the Mavic Mini. But the Mavic yeah. Mini. That's oh this. Now yeah. this is another great. Mavic that, Mini. It might actually be worth buying a drone now. Yeah, uh, it's only four hundred bucks. Yeah, it's only four hundred. So if you crash it, well, maybe it's no big deal, but that's a lot less big deal. You don't need a license, right? Isn't no, that it's the big it, thing? yeah. The point is, it's light enough that two hundred forty-nine grams. Uh, it, so. it comes yeah. out to be the point. You don't need to go buy a license for it. Right. And for a lot of people, where you just want to do a quick B-roll and you know shoot the drone up and get an aerial shot of what you're shooting or something. Uh, and you even get a controller for that price. It's the it's you get the drone and the controller. That's if that's yeah, the case. Why awesome. doesn't Mr. Durr use one of those for our B-roll? Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Right? <laughs> 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 All right, well, I can see that going on the budget sheet. <laughs> Might be a little loud. Yeah. That, that's going to be probably uh, in my, my repertoire in the next month or two. Um, cool. Because I know Michael will bug me until I buy him one. Um, LED lights. Boy, you know, there's a lot of LED lights out there, and, you know, we're going to do a whole segment on, cool on those. Um, but and They've dropped in price like crazy. Uh, and man. the capabilities of these things how are... cheap they've gotten. Yeah. They're really We have a new, a new line Nanlite, which yeah. we're looking at. Yeah, that's what's it is, right now. It's the same yeah. sort of thing. It's technology takes a leap after a few months. They're able to make a lot of lights a lot less Off. expensive. A new line comes out. Off of you just blew the circuit right <laughs> there. we go. There it is. And a whole new line, and boom, and they're incredible. Yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, that thing's, I think, like 800 bucks for what size panel is that? It's, it's crazy big. Yeah, it looks like a 20 by. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. That thing would have been like three grand. Now, I wish they shipped me the 25 units I owe, but that's another, well, that's yeah. another matter. Allocation, what are you going to do? If you're a gadget freak, you know, being a photographer is the place you want to be. Because uh, you can just and go nuts. Don't here. believe the hype. I mean, it's, there's still a lot of great stuff out there, a lot of neat stuff to look at. And if you have any questions it's... at all, just call Phil. <laughs> <laughs> or if you call Jody, he'll just pass you to Phil. Getting good sound uh, for your videos is really, really important. And... Pay attention to this mic. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is, these little microphones are incredible. They're so light. Uh, it's easy just to take it and uh, plug it in. You kind of just hang it off your shirt, or you can get a, a lav mic and plug it in and hide it. And then this is the receiver that would sit with the camera. And uh, so, like, if you're in the field and you want to go lightweight and make your own vlogs in the field or uh, whatever, uh, this is a really good system. There's a couple other companies now that have come out with something similar Ceramonic. to these. Ceramonic has a two-channel system. Yeah, with that. Two, yeah. two mics. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. 
But yes, <clears throat> this thing is awesome, awesome. but there are, there are a couple others. There's out there too. one it's problem really with neat. road. In our in-store system, we can't make that second letter. What do you mean? What's the second letter? That's an O with a line through it. I don't think so. What do you think it is? I think it's another language. Oh, we have. <laughs> and the next on the rocks will be conspiracy theories brought to you. <laughs> conspiracy theories in the photo industry. Jody will kind of be doing that show by himself. <laughs> and you can tune to his podcast. Be careful that DJI, they're listening. <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> anyway, everybody, <laughs> we have a lot of fun doing all this, and you know, don't think that we've left out the gear that you own on purpose. Um, or get we, on photopxl.com and tell us what we left out, right? You know, we could go tell on, for, you know, and, and we could go on forever and ever. We've got a lot of cool ideas uh, coming up in uh, the very near future. That's my wife. What she just messaged me. Hi, Deborah. Everything good in your world? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, honey. I'm in, I'm in Jody's world right now. <laughs> it's almost over. Anyway, first off, uh, before we get too far off a track, I want to say thank you for watching. Look, photography is supposed to be about having some fun, taking some good pictures. And because we get a lot of gear, we can enjoy all the technical sides about it. There's something about being a photographer where there's switches and dials and knobs and all sorts of things we can play with. We didn't talk about software at all as far as software in a year goes and uh, between what Adobe's done and Luminar and On One and Topaz and Capture One from Phase One. There's a ton of good software out there that can take your images and go even further with them. Sure. I mean, there's so much we can talk about and we'll be talking about these things uh, to the best of our ability in future episodes, because we have a lot of things and ideas. A lot of this software will come in the printing show. Yes, in the printing yeah. show. Yeah. And yeah. we're even thinking about having a show about how to dress like a photographer. And uh, Jody's going to be our consultant oh on that. Uh, so that could be a lot of fun <laughs> in the future going forward. So I want to say thank you. Uh, if you're in the holiday season, have a great holiday. Be safe. Drink a little, not a lot. And... Uh, just have a good time taking pictures. That's right. Phil, it's been great working with you yeah. and Thanks, uh, hanging out and doing all the things uh, we can. Uh, Jody, I can't touch you right now. Yeah, Jody is somewhat. I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit communicable. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, I just said that. Yeah. I just said that. I know. Without mistake. <laughs> you, know, you did well. Um, <laughs> and we do have some other ideas which we hope to bring forward to you in in the near future. Um, I have to thank Robert's uh, camera because. There isn't a camera shop like Roberts anywhere. They've got a great used. Look at the uh, links on the bottom and tell me who they're from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's an inside joke, which I, I will be or paying maybe for. Not. <laughs> I will be paying for for the rest of my life. <clears throat> Mistakes do happen. Luckily, we hugged. We love hugged. you, Kevin. Uh, we for love a while you. there, I didn't think you did. No, we love you. <laughs> but, you know, bottom line is, uh, there's so much that Roberts offers. Um, they've got a great used department. We've got a kind of a cool video coming up uh, talking about used photo gear. And uh, we do have an idea coming up in the future where uh, we're going to be visiting Roberts more on a regular basis, like we used to visit, you know, hardware stores when my dad used to take me there on a Saturday. And uh, update you more regularly on some of the cool gear that's come in. My hat's off to these guys. I've bought a lot, a lot of gear from them and uh, I've had a great relationship for a very long time. So uh, thank you. And thank all of you readers. Michael Durr, thanks very much for all the work you've done for us. You're always behind the camera and never in front of the camera but on our side of things. You probably want to keep your distance is uh, quite obvious from the, the way you are over there. And uh, uh, Chris Sanderson, who uh, is also part of the PXL team and my wife, Deborah. We wish you all a happy holiday. Thanks again. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. Become part of our family, and don't forget to visit us at PhotoPXL. Bye, everybody, and happy holidays. I think this is the cure for the flu. Whiskey in general? Or? Yeah, yeah, alcohol. Oh. One of the things I do want, I want to. Chin chin. <laughs> you all right, Kevin? Any calls? No, it's just body? something. Something just. <laughs> I'm just empty. Just, so. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, something to close by. Something to close by.